Okay, listen, I need to be frank with you for a moment. So, hi, my name is Frank. And listen, I don't have enough video footage to bridge the gap between now and when the new sailing adventure kicks off. So I need to create some content. So what this video is gonna be about is this dinghy and also this little grill that you see back there. And since I realized that that is not exactly the most uh, exciting stuff to make a video about, I wanna give you five seconds to consider if you wanna watch this video or not. Okay, well since you're still here, Okay, so you're either aware of what this dinghy is or you're not. If you're not, I actually created an eight-part video series of myself building this dinghy. So if you want to watch that video series, just click the link right there. Right there. And you can watch that eight-part video series. I want to tell you about some of the changes that I've made to this dinghy since I built it. Okay, one of the most apparent things that you see right here is the gunnel guards. That is this uh, kind of padded thing that is protecting the gunnels, all of this stuff. And uh, beneath the, the fire hose is actually a layer of yoga mat. So that just kind of gives it a bit more, uh, you know, cushion. And also, I guess it does add a little bit of reserve buoyancy, but, you know, not all that much. Another thing that I added are these mesh bags here. They're just open top bags. And this will give us a space to basically just dump a bunch of, you know, lines in, like our, our, uh, our docking lines or things like that. I've got another bag over there. And then another bag back there in the very... All right, let's talk about oars. The darker pair on the top here, these are actually the ones that I made, while these bottom ones are the ones that we're going to be taking with us. And let me explain why that is. I actually took these oars one day, and I, I just I ran a kind of an experiment on them. I set them out there in the driveway in the middle of the hot sun, the middle of the summer, and just let them cook. What happened was, at the end of the day, they kind of, they warped a little bit. You know, looking along the shaft of the oar, you could see that there was kind of a, a bit of a bend in them. And I just figured, well, dang, if one day cooking in the sun, you know, caused that, then it's just going to be like a, a noodle, you know, uh, out there getting cooked every single day. So anyways, that, that just worried me. So what we did, we got this second set of oars back here. These are super duper nice oars and these guys they gave us a you know a bit of a discount on these things and they are very very nice so this is what we're going to be going with and by the way i have <laughs> reluctantly torture tested these oars through the same you know sun test i put these through and these did not bend at all one difference in these oars is that they are tapered they go from one and a half inch right here at the whatever you call this part and they go up to two inches up here by the handle. And what that does, that moves a lot of the weight inboard. So you have, basically they're balanced better, where these have a lot of weight outside the boat. It just makes rowing much, much easier when you have balanced oars. And speaking of the taper, let me show you one other kind of cool thing that happens, uh, or that I'm gonna take advantage of with this taper. So check this out. Let's put you right down there. Okay, I made this thing, it is a little collar that slides onto the skinniest part of the oar right here. And what this is going to allow is we can put a lock through these little holes. And then we can, you know, attach the oars basically to a hard point in the dinghy to keep the oars from walking off or to keep them from, you know, getting stolen, in other words. You really can only do so much to prevent theft of, you know, your your dinghy and stuff like that from somebody who really wants to take it but what you can do is make your stuff uh inconvenient to steal and if you know your dinghy is less convenient to steal stuff from than somebody else's chances are that somebody else's stuff is going to get stolen and, and not yours so kind of a security device simple but hopefully it's going to be you know effective Okay, and lastly, I think lastly, concerning the dinghy, one of the biggest changes I've made is actually something that's quite subtle. And what that is, 
it is these hard anchor points right here. I have two of them up on the uh, the bow locker, and I also have another two of them back here on the buoyancy tanks. So I can now lift this entire dinghy using these hard points. And let me show you how that works. It works with the help of the dinghy lifting harness. Behold, the dinghy lifting harness. Now, this is a contraption of my own creation made out of one inch tubular webbing that I did all the sewing on. I just want to make it very clear that I did all of this and it's amazing. Yep, you know, pretty cool. So this webbing, this uh, dinghy harness, it clips into those hard points back there. And then it has this bit in the middle where you can lift it up like that, clip it into a halyard, you know, one way or another, and then the entire boat can be lifted out of the water using a halyard. Or what you can do is instead, if you want to lift the dinghy onto the davits, you just clip onto these rings here directly onto those and then you can lift it onto the davits like that you know you would lift straight up on that one and you would lift straight up on that one and this middle part just kind of stays floppy in the middle so yes dinghy lift harness okay i think we're done talking about the dinghy let's talk about this grill this is a weber q1000 propane grill and this is what we're going to be going with on the good ship sand flea up to this point we have not had a grill before and uh we're going with this one because basically what it's made out of it's 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 essentially made out of aluminum and plastic with a few exceptions there's basically just not a whole lot on this grill that can corrode and that is a huge benefit in a marine environment however here's the big downside this grill, you know, it's not designed specifically for marine use, so there's no really, uh, you know, convenient way to mount it on a boat. This is basically the table or the platform that the grill is going to mount to, and then the platform is going to mount to the rail of the boat. This platform is made out of three-quarter inch plywood that I covered in epoxy and fiberglass. And then I drilled oversized holes where all of these uh, mounting holes are. I filled those with thickened fiberglass and then drilled the final hole in the thickened fiberglass. So all of this stuff that, you know, there's no bare wood in, in any of these holes. And then finally I painted it with uh, uh, topside primer and topside paint. So it should be pretty tough and durable. It's, you know, it'll get beat up, but this piece here is the piece that's actually going to clamp this whole assembly to the rail. This is called a mantis clamp, a rail clamp. And it comes in a variety of sizes. Um, you know, this particular one is for a one inch rail, which is what our boat is. And these pieces here are going to mount back here where those those four holes are. There's a, I've got a pair of those. And then this is the other uh, main component. This metal bar here. It's an aluminum aluminum bar, one and a half inches wide, and I don't I don't know how thick it is, maybe three sixteenths or something like that. This is the piece that is going to actually hold the feet of the grill down to the board and then mount in these holes here. So this holds the grill down and this holds the board uh, the this board, you know, to the rail of the boat. Okay. So knowing that, now let's put it all together. Okay, so there it is. The grill and the platform and everything is now temporarily mounted to this little rail. And this this thing is this is hollow, you know, also. So it's I think that's why it didn't really clamp on there as well. I have tested these clamps on the railing at the boat and they fit very very snugly. So I think it's going to be okay once it's actually installed on the boat. So that's it. That is the little grill setup. Cool. Oh, I thought of one other little detail about the dinghy, and it is, I've got a little name tag here on the back. It's just a little 
bit of identification that, you know, links this dinghy, you know, to us, you know, in case the thing, you know, drifts away or get lost or anything like that. At least there is something. Um, there's not a state or federal number that's going to be attached to this dinghy. I just, I realize that it might be a bad idea to not have it on there. I just cannot um, make myself put, you know, three inch tall letters all over the side of this thing. I, I just, I just can't. And technically, you don't have to have those, you know, registration numbers on a dinghy that is this size if it is powered by sails or oars. But, you know, technically I, I would be in violation, you know, when the motor is on it. But, you know, I'm just going to roll the dice on that and see how it goes. But anyways, you know, the little tag is what I wanted to show you there. Okay, I think I'm kind of, kind of running out of stuff now. Hmm. Hello, I need to make an appointment to get a tattoo. How's that? It's not so bad. Ooh. <laughs> nice, honey. Yes. <laughs>